Okay, working today with the Enterprise File Fabric and a new media feature around transcoding video. So the uh, the reason that you want to transcode video is often you uh, put some video up on uh, a site and uh, you want to look at it in your web browser and uh, it's possible that that format or the uh, codecs inside of it aren't going to be conducive to watching. So for example, I've got uh, some trailers up here. These are already transcoded. Uh, we've got an MP4 here, which is pretty much the, the standard for watching something in a web browser. The MP4 standards and use H.264. This is on Dropbox. I'm just going to through the Enterprise File Fabric. I can scrub it. I could do the same thing if this was on uh, S3, a Cloudian based system, Google, uh, Swift Stack, OpenStack Swift. Uh, same thing, you see a, an MOV file here. MOV is a, a QuickTime file. But um, you've got different, QuickTime's just a wrapper. So inside this uh, transcoded or proxy file, we're going to see that um, it's got H.264 as well. So again, I can uh, scrub through and I can watch this right in my browser. And these are both pretty small files. So what happens when uh, you're working with your master copy, you've got your mezzanine copy. For example, um, I did a, a recent video about um, containerizing the enterprise file fabric. I've got this up here, but you can see this is my master copy. It's, it's almost a gigabyte. Um, it's not in a format. In fact, I can show you. If uh, we expand it, um, I view some of our media services on it. So I've got the MD5 sum as a sidecar file. That means that uh, if I was to copy this to another type of storage, I could check the MD5 and make sure there's no bit rot or corruption in the, uh, the transfer. But then uh, the other thing I can do is I can look at the uh, media info extraction for this file. And that's saying you allow me to see the, the format, the video, the audio rates and whatnot. And so again, um, if I scroll down here, I can see that this is a ProRes file, right? And, and it's using 422LT. And I can guarantee that if, if I click this play button, you know, it's not going to um, come up. It's not going to be able to play this. So it's going to, you know, pull a little bit of the file and realize that, that it's not a conducive format. And so even if that was um, a conducive format, it's, it's just so big, right? It's, um, it's a high quality, it's a, a gigabyte file. I don't know if I want to be pulling a, a gigabyte out of my S3 or my, my Dropbox in this case. So what do I want to do? I want to transcode. I want to create what's called a proxy. A proxy is a uh, like a thumbnail, but for a video file. So I'm going to right click on this. Now, of course, we can set this up with, uh, you know, how uh, files get processed right when they come into the system. But I'm going to specifically pick a transcode file. And I've got uh, a number of different presets. So, you know, again, this is already a ProRes file. And maybe if I have a media asset manager that, that allows me to work and to preview proxies in ProRes, maybe I just want to change this to a ProRes proxy. But you know, my desire is to watch it right here in the browser. So I'm not going to lose this file. I'm simply going to add another sidecar file to it. And uh, in this case, I want a, uh, what we would call a web-based um, MP4 um, encoded H.264 file. Um, and I use 720p. I could you know, custom change the, uh, the size or factor. But I think this is going to be fine for, for what I'm looking for. So when I click uh, Start Transcoding, we're going to create a background task. And that background task is going to take that file down. It's going to bring it to a new container we have in the Enterprise File Fabric uh, utilizing um, open source code like FFmpeg. And it's going to uh, transcode that file and store it up in my Dropbox. Now, while that's happening in the background, I, I want to also highlight that um, you know, I can pick custom. If I wanted to do something like instead of a ProRes, if I want to, to still use that MOV wrapper because maybe I'm going to want to play this on a Mac, but um, I want H.264, I can still do things like that. Um, I can adjust the, the video rate uh, because this is an H.264, the audio bit rate. I can uh, play with the resolution. Or if I really understand my uh, FFmpeg, I can do some advanced options. So maybe I wanted to output this file, but I only wanted the uh, the first 10 seconds of it. Or, or it, let's say it's a really long file. It's not in this case. It's maybe three minutes long. But um, you can imagine if this was a full, you know, hour-long movie. Um, I worked for a media shop that was producing a new uh, film. Um, maybe I just want to see the the beginning of the clip. Maybe I only want to transcode the first you know, two or three minutes um, so that I could 
look at a clip, decide that this is the file I want to work on, and then of course using some of our cloud tools, bring this down um, to my system. All right, so let's check on this task, and I'm gonna say speed up time. So now that my uh, transcode job is complete, I can see that I have this uh, proxy file. Now, of course, I could have had the uh, proxy file associated with the, the main file, and uh, it would just be in this uh, dropdown, but um, I had it uh, as a separate file. Now, making it a separate file, I could perform content um, intelligence on it, so I could get the MD5 sum and the uh, media info for this file, but I think the main thing we want to see is now I can actually preview it in the web. So it's a much smaller file, it's uh, you know 15 megs, I can still scrub you know, into this file, look through, go forward, go back, but, um, you know, obviously, if I was using this, I wouldn't necessarily want to preview a 900 meg, almost a gigabyte file. It's much easier to uh, use my browser to, uh, to see a proxy that's uh, around 15 megs to, to pull that down and ensure that this is the clip that I really want to work on if I'm going to open up Avid, Premiere, or whatever I'm going to use for this uh, clip.